Hello everyone. I'd like to continue our discussion about trees, going over some very fundamental stuff in data structures here. So we started off talking about how to draw binary trees and we did a class exercise. Um, I'm gonna go over a simple solution that satisfies some desirable properties. So we want our tree drawing to, you know, space things equally so they don't overlap each other. Um, so we'll say in particular, so that every node has a unique x coordinate. So, so that's one desirable. Um, let's also say that we want to make sure that the x coordinates um, come out in an order that's the same as um, the order that the in order, that's a mouthful, that the in order would visit them. Okay, um, and we should also say that the y coordinate, the y coordinate is proportional to the depth of the node, which is the length of the shortest path from the root. Okay, so I'm going to show a simple scheme that satisfies these three things. Um, let me make a helper method here. I'll call it draw. Rec. This is an internal method that, that's going to recursively draw. Um, I'm going to pass along a width, which is roughly how wide I want my tree to be. Um, I'm also going to pass along which node I'm drawing. I'm going to pass along the current x position, and I'm going to pass along the depth of recursion. Okay. So when I first call this, I'm going to call it on, so I'm going to pass along the width, whatever that, that was specified. I'm going to call it on the root. So the root's the first thing I want to draw. Um, I'm going to start it off being centered at a depth of zero. So x coordinate zero, depth zero. All right. So first thing I can do is draw this node. So I'll say plt dot scatter node, or actually I guess so, so the x coordinate will be x. The y coordinate will be negative depth. Okay. So our convention is that we we draw trees from top to bottom. So a larger depth means a lower y coordinate. Um, and let me, um, yeah, I'll draw the node. This will be 100 is the size of it. K means that I want to draw it black. Okay. Now let me also draw what the value of the node is to help me out here. So I'll say, um, actually I say plt.text x plus, I'll say some, some proportion of the width. I'll move this over a little bit to the right so I can see the text directly to the right of the node. Um, put it at that y coordinate there, and then what I want to draw is text corresponding to whatever the value is of this node. Okay. Now next, what I need, okay, so that's just going to draw the first node, um, but I'm going to need to do some recursion to draw all the nodes um, if they exist. So the first thing I should do is say, does the node have a left child? If it does, well, let me figure out the position of the left node. Now here, here's where the magic comes in. So I'm going to say x next equals x minus width over 2 to the depth. Okay. So what, what this is going to do is um, the lower down I am, the less I move to the left. And it's actually very important that this is a power of 2. You'll see when, when it's drawn out. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to make a variable for this. I'll call this dx because I'm going to use it again. Okay, so x next is equal to x minus dx. Um, what I want to do actually is draw the edge um, from my node to this left node, to this left child. So I'll say plot. So I'll say from x to x next, those are my x coordinates, my y coordinates go from negative depth and then negative depth minus one. So I'm going to draw a line segment from this node to the next node to show that, that the, the child parent relationship. And now I can go ahead and do the recursion. So I can say self dot draw rec um, width node dot left. So I'm going to the left node now. X next. That's what the next x coordinate is going to be. And then depth plus one. I'm one more deep into my tree here. And I'm going to do something very similar for the for the right node. So I'll say actually I don't need an else. I want to say if node dot right. Then go ahead and, and do similar stuff. But this time I'm going to move to the right by this increment dx and x. Okay. 
I'm going to recurse on the right one. So let's see what this looks like. Let me actually draw a tree here. Okay, does it run? Um, string object has no, oops, I meant to say dot format, no dot value, okay. All right, so there's our tree. Um, so does it satisfy all the properties? Well, so I wanted to make sure that everything had a unique X coordinate. I know some of these look like they're close, but they are unique, okay. Um, I also wanted to, so let me draw this a little bit wider so, so we can see the differences a little more. I also want to make sure that um, the X coordinates come out in the in order. Okay, so let's see. So in order, remember it goes left, then prints, then goes right. So we go left, left, left. Okay, three, print, seven, print. We go right, left, print, eight, nine, ten. Um, and then we go down to 11, which doesn't have any left, so we print that, 11, go down to the right, left, 13, 12, 13, 14, 15. So another way of saying this is I want to make sure um, I've drawn these a particular way so that um, the left child of any node is less than the value of that node and the right child is greater than the value of that node. So another way of saying this is I want, if I sweep a vertical line from left to right, the vertical line should touch the nodes in their numerical order. So I go 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 20. All right. So that worked. And the reason it works is because every time we go one more deep, we move by a half of what we moved before. So this is just going back to that um, identity that we had where you know, one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth eventually converges to two. So what I can see is that um, I move by an amount of width to the, to the left and right. At the first level, then I move by width over two, then I move by width over four, then I move by width over eight. So the most I'm going to move out is two times width here to the right and to the left. Um, now, if I look at this alternating sequence. So here I, I move by width, then I move by width over two to the left. Um, what I can show is that from here on out, every, nothing I move, so, so this goes width over two, width over four, width over eight. Even if I keep adding things to the right here, they will never quite reach what 16 was. Okay, so that's, that's what we get by doing powers of two. Actually, if it did powers of three, I think we'd be in even better shape here because some of these are, are pretty close. Let me just see that real quick. So if I do powers of three, um, then things, well, okay, some of these, the, the problem is it, it moves more closely, it moves towards zero more quickly, but but yeah, these get spread out a little more. Okay, so, so powers of two is good. Let's stick with that. Okay, now there's this thing implicit in the tree that I made here. I, I didn't choose these, these values of these nodes randomly. Um, I chose them very intentionally to satisfy the properties of what's known as a binary search tree. All right, so what is a binary search tree or a BST? So a BST is a tree, is a binary tree with the property that all of the values in a node's left subtree are strictly less than the node's value, um, while all of the values in a node's right subtree are strictly greater than that node's value. Okay. So, um, you know, if I look at this tree, for example, I can see that everything to the left of 10 is less than 10. Everything to the left of seven is less than seven. Everything to the right of seven is greater than seven. Everything to the right of 10 is greater than 10, and so on and so forth. I, I pick any node, this, this property is satisfied. Um, so it follows, it's pretty easy corollary, um, that you know, the left node, or the left child of a node has a value strictly less than this value. And the right child has a value strictly greater than um, strictly greater than the node's value. So that's one thing. Um, another fact is that the in-order traversal 
of a BST will yield the values in sorted order. So you can't see this enough times, so let's just quickly go through the in order again. So I'll make just the kind of starter method here in the binary tree. So I'll say if the root exists, then I'll do um, self.root in order. Um, I'll do the bulk of the work um, with an in order method that's defined in the tree node class. So I'll say if I have a left child, um, then I know that that comes before this one. So that's how you see the in order makes sense here. I better do the recursion on the left child first. Um, once I've done that, I can go ahead and print the value. Um, and then I can go to the things that are greater than this node, if they exist. So let's make sure that this actually prints things in order, like I said it did. So if I say t.inOrder, boom, there we go. 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 20. Good, very good. All right, so, so now I'm going to have you use this, this property here, um, and really this property, to, to search through a tree to see if, an, if a particular value exists. And then after that, we'll talk about how to mutate the tree or how to actually add things to it and, and remove them. Okay, so do a quick exercise. We'll, we'll move on to that.